Hi, this is Deluge from Synthstrom Audible. It's a sampler, sequencer, looper, drum machine, synth, basically an audio workstation in a box. It's been updated so many times since it came out that rather than just talk about what's new, let's take a look at the whole thing. Obviously, its most prominent feature is the 16x8 grid, which has a few views based on what you're doing. Let's start with those and then go on to everything else. So let's take a look at the grid views. It has a piano roll view for sequencing notes, an isomorphic grid for playing notes live, an Ableton Live style clip launcher or session view, but it also has an arranger for planning out your song over time. The grid is also a synth mod matrix where you connect modulation sources to modulation destinations. It's also kind of like a low res computer screen when you wanna edit sample start and endpoints. It can also be a QWERTY-like keyboard for typing preset and project names. The purpose of this video is to go over the whole music making workflow from scratch and see how everything fits together. If you're only interested in what's new in Firmware 3, look for audio clip and looping on the timeline for the big stuff. And for more information about what's new, look in the description. Also, we've got a lot to go through, so there will be less music and more talking about workflow in this video. I'll link to some great musical examples in the description as well. Before we dive into the details, one thing that's important to know about the grid in most of its modes, it's a canvas into something much bigger where you can scroll up and down, left and right, and zoom in as well. Let's start with a brief tour of the hardware. The pads are RGB and not velocity or pressure sensitive, but you can hook up an external keyboard and the synth engine itself responds to velocity and aftertouch. To the right of the grid are two additional columns of pads with functions relating to whatever is happening on the main grid, typically muting or launching clips on the left column and auditioning sounds or launching song sections on the right. Finally, for the grid, you'll notice that many of the pads are labeled and give you quick shift access to various parameters. So for example, if I go into this clip and want to look at the waveform of this sample, this button is labeled waveform, I hold shift, press waveform, and I can see its waveform. The layout is by parameter sections and the sections are labeled sideways, and then the actual parameter is labeled underneath the pad. So for example, this is oscillator one, oscillator two, and its various parameters are labeled under each pad. Aside from the grid, you've got controls on top. Generally speaking, front and center is where you change grid modes and interact with various menu options and parameters. The four character display obviously shows less information than a high res screen, but that's somewhat balanced out with having big clearly viewable letters and the grid. So most of the time you're just changing a single parameter over here and choosing what you change on the grid. However, if you don't like this workflow of hitting shift and selecting a pad, you can always dive down into menus here. So every parameter that's represented on the grid is also represented in a menu system over here. So for example, oscillator one, its parameters can be seen here. The two black knobs are generally used for scrolling and zooming, we saw that before, and the two gold knobs called parameter effect controls let you edit the value of the parameter pairs you see on this top row here. So for example, if I wanted to change the pan of this sound, I would select this button and then pan is the lower parameter, right? So just change it like that. And then if I wanted to change the filter cutoff, right? I could do that, add resonance and so on. So that's how you use the two gold knobs in conjunction with this parameter pair selection strip. There are additional buttons here and their shift function is labeled in inverse text. Now, there are a lot of things that are controlled with shift combos or button press combos in Deluge. It is a little bit intimidating to begin with, but as you use the functions, you sort of get used to them. I think what's more important is to know what it can do and then later on, remember the shift or button press pair that does the actual function. Deluge supports undo in a lot of places. Right, so if you make any mistakes, you can easily undo them or redo them if you like. In terms of connectivity, Deluge can be powered by USB or with an external power adapter, and it has a built-in rechargeable battery as well. 
When powered as of version 3, its USB port can be used as a USB host as well, meaning that you can plug and power a USB keyboard directly with Deluge. It does need to be connected to power for this to happen, and you need to get this adapter, which costs about $5 to $10. Deluge also has clock input, gate, and two CV outputs for connecting to modular gear, MIDI in and out, which can be configured as through, left and right quarter inch outputs, three and a half millimeter or eighth inch headphones, line in, mic in, and gain control for the mic, as well as a built-in microphone. There's an SD card slot up front and an internal speaker for emergency use only. So that's the hardware overview. Let's take a look at using Deluge and start with project structure. A project is built out of clips, which are phrases of any length that you like that control either the internal sound engine, a synth or sample, for example, or external gear via MIDI or CV. These clips can then be placed on a linear timeline, kind of like a DAW, so that they are played in sequence, or you also have Song View, which is sort of like Ableton Live's Session View, where you can either launch individual clips or launch entire sections that are color coded. So in Arranger mode, I can either hit play and start from the beginning or choose any point that I want to start at, let's say here, and hit this button and play. And the timeline will just play consecutively, right? I can zoom in as well in a linear fashion. And then in song mode, I can launch groups of clips based on their color, right? So if I wanted to launch this group, right? I select it, hit play. If I wanted to move to say this group, right? Then these would stop. And then these would be active. This project, by the way, is Darkener by Lip Sync. Thanks for sending this over. Links in the description. So song view is sort of like for jamming with your clips and sections. And then the arranger is if you just want your song to play from start to finish or from a certain point. There are five types of clips in Deluge. So if I wanted to say create a new clip, I could create a synth clip, a kit clip, MIDI CV, or audio clip. Audio clips were introduced in 3.0, so they don't have a dedicated button. You just press the select knob and that creates an audio clip. Audio clips are simple containers for sound. We'll get to them later. The idea is that they can be used for live looping in song view or just be placed anywhere on the timeline in the arranger. Synth clips will just play using the internal synth engine and kit clips are collections of sound. Typically used for drum kits, but you can use them for anything else like loops. MIDI clips contain MIDI information, both notes and control change information that you can send to any one of the 16 channels out the MIDI outputs or over USB. And then CV clips let you send control voltage out the CV and gate outputs. So let's start with sequencing. I'll start out with a new project. With sequencing, let's first look at how you create clips and then we'll zoom out to the song and arranger views. Let's take a look at synth type clips to begin with. You've got a piano roll, every row represents a note. You can either have them be arranged in a scale, which you can choose, right? And there are a few on board or just have it arranged in semitones. You can change the presets. Before version three, they were just numbered and you can give them names now in version three. So let's go for tuba, sounds good. And why not go for a minor scale? You can scroll up and down to play lower or higher notes. And of course, just place notes on the timeline to create your music. If you want a note to play for longer, you just hold it and make it longer. And that's how synth and also MIDI and CV clips work. Kit clips work differently. Right here, every row represents a sample. Now, it's using the same notes, so I'll Go back into synth clip view for this one, zoom out for a second to my song, start a new clip, and then change that into a kit. So these are the samples in this kit. And again, numbered kits before version three and named kits if you like since 3.0. Yeah, and the sequencing these guys is just as you'd expect, right? Now I mentioned before, this is how you audition the various elements of your kit 
And you can also mute elements with these buttons. Now, deluge clips aren't just limited to 16 steps or a bar. If you want finer resolution than 16 steps, just zoom in. Right. So if I want to add ratchets, I can do it that way. And I can make a clip longer as well by holding shift and left right. right. So now I've got two bars. I zoomed out, I can see both bars. Or zoom in and scroll left and right. There are a few other nice features. So for example, I've got two screens here, right? One is empty and one isn't. If I wanted to make changes cross screen, I just press the cross screen button and then any change that I make would happen on both screens. Deluge also has a triplets view. So if I clear this out and press triplets view, then we could easily do that. Right. Notice these changes happened here as well because of cross screen. I can add these guys or delete them and make that change. Happens cross screen. So straightforward stuff. Let me get out of cross screen and triplets view. Go back to my tuba. Deluge supports chance and iteration. So for example, if I wanted this note to happen not 100%, but only 40% of the time, I could do that. I could also have it happen on every other iteration with a lot of options here. So let's say every uh, first of three runs. And now, awesome. Other options are to hold the note and then change its velocity or transpose it. Now, aside from step sequencing notes, you could also play them live into the sequence. Now, there are three ways to play them live using either the audition pads, an external MIDI keyboard, or using Deluge's keyboard view. The layout of keyboard view is very similar to the way the strings of a bass guitar are laid out, except this has eight strings instead of four. Every row is five semitones above the one below it, or a fourth above the one below it. The pad colors change. As pitch changes, you can scroll up and down this as well. And then the root note is lit up slightly brighter. Notes of the scale are lit up as well to help you out. And if you remove scales, then you get just the root notes. As you can see, notes like a bass guitar layout or normal guitar repeat themselves across the fretboard. The advantage of a layout like this is that it's fully isomorphic, meaning that once you learn a chord shape, unlike a piano keyboard, you can transpose it as long as you keep the shape. So this is a major chord. I can transpose it just by playing the same shape. Also, if you've got a scale, just hit the pads that are lit up and something nice will probably happen. Another advantage of this layout is that you can play spread chords really easily. So, you know, this is a relatively closed chord, but if we hit pads this way, right? You've got a really nicely spread chord just with a few fingers. You can also use an external keyboard to control deluge. You need to tell this synth clip which channel to listen to. You do that by hitting MIDI learn and holding this and then hitting any one of the keys on your keyboard. Aside from notes, you can also sequence parameter changes or automation. Let's choose a different sound and sequence just this. Right, so if I hit record, I could say automate the filter cutoff or resonance. Or say panning. Right, notice the parameters change as the sequence runs through. There are shortcuts for say deleting an automation, so shift and a parameter will delete its automation. And you can also copy and paste automations with learn. You can also step sequence parameter automation by holding a pad and changing its parameter. So let's take this pattern, for example. Right, super simple. So if I wanted to say add a reverb to this pad, I would just make sure that I'm in the reverb 
change the reverb parameter. Let's say I wanted to add a delay to this one. Go into delay. Like this. So now I'll get reverb automation here and delay automation here. Okay, let's move on to song view. So once you've created one or more clips, you can check them out in song view. You've got a visual representation of what's going on in each clip, right? So this is my little bass pattern and this is my kit. And I can keep adding as many additional clips as I wanted, but let's take a look at song structure. So I can take, let's say my drum kit and copy it like this. Now notice how when I copied this, this second version is muted, right? And it's also in a different section. Remember this column represents sections. The idea is that once you have a specific kit or specific instrument, it can only play once in each section. So if I wanted to create a variation here, let's say just do this, let's play this, go back to my song, right? This original clip is playing here. I could always trigger this guy. Right? And then in the next iteration, I'd have my snare clip, I could always go back to this one. Now I could copy the bass line as well. I could put it into here and it would push the other clips down. Notice now this joined the second section as well. And let's just make a change here just for the heck of it. So now this is my song, right? I've got this section playing. I can always move both clips to this section or back to this one. Right. Very chill. And you could rearrange these any way you like, right? So if you wanted the colors to be together, you could move them around. Now you've got each section separately. Now you're not locked into sections, right? So I could choose to change the kit and borrow it from this section. So now I've got different parts from different sections playing, or just activate a section again altogether. So this way you can just keep on cloning tracks, adding them to additional new sections, editing them, new colors will appear here. You can also move a clip to a different section if you like by changing its colors. So sections are color coded. Final word about song view. This is also where you use Deluge as a looper. We'll get to that when we talk about audio clips later on. So song view is a great way to perform live with your project, mute clips, bring sections in and out. But if you want to create a performance from start to finish, you would do that in the arranger, which is sort of like a timeline in your DAW. Now, unlike song view, where a particular kit or synth can appear in multiple rows in the arranger, each kit or sound gets just one row. So this is the slow bass row, and this is my, my CR78 row. So this is where I plan out my song, right? I can just drop a clip onto here and maybe make it a little bit longer so it'll play twice and then bring in the drums here and play my lovely song, right? Now, the color will tell you which version of a clip is played on the arranger and you can change that by holding the clip and turning the select knob. So I could start out with this version of my kit, then have this version play, and I want the bass to play throughout, then maybe change here. Right? So change the color, and maybe make these longer as well. And that's how you plan out your magnificent song. Now let's say I didn't like how that ended. So I could create a new clip in the song and then import it into here. But if I plonk down one more version of it and then scroll through its colors, you can see that there is a white version. White clips are unique to the arranger. They don't exist in the song view. Then you could just go in and place any note you wanted in that view. Let me turn off triplets for this one and say, pick this note, right? So that's how I want to end my song. Let's go back into the arranger, hear this masterpiece out.
By the way, you may have noticed that when I created this white clip, it was empty. I can also take an existing version of a clip, hit shift, and it will then turn white and I could still edit it with the notes that it had before. So that's the arranger overall. When we get to audio clips, remember this because you could place an audio clip anywhere on a timeline, record it directly into the timeline, just like you would in a DAW. One last note about the arranger and song views. You can record a song performance into the arranger. Recording a song into the arranger will start from the scroll point. Right now it's empty, so I'll start from the beginning. Set up your mutes any way you want and just hit record and song to start recording into the arranger. So I could now say launch a clip. Make any automation performances I wanted or any other performance. Maybe swap to this one. And go here. So now that performance has been committed into the arranger. I can scroll, look at it. Notice that a white clip was generated here because I made automation changes. Okay, so this covers project structure. Let's talk a little bit about Deluge's synth engine. For that, I'll just start up a new project and also an init preset, right? Each voice can have any one of a number of configurations. It can be a subtractive synth, FM or frequency modulation, Ring mod, which is a variation on subtractive, and it can also play samples as well as affect and even transpose incoming audio. Now there are three ways to change the parameter of a synth. You can use the gold knobs and the parameter strip. You can dive in and change the various parameters using the menu, the nested menu system here. So for example, at oscillator one and change its parameters or with shift and the parameter name, like I showed you before. I think that's the quickest way, right? So if I wanted to change the type of oscillator one, right? Just hit this. So oscillator types are what you'd expect in a synth. Square, analog square, saw, analog saw. You can load up a sample, we'll be doing that. Affect incoming audio, like I mentioned before, left, right, or stereo, left, right. Sine wave and triangle. And so the basic wave shapes. And like I mentioned before, you can access these from the menu as well. So oscillator one, right, type, and then go through these. These are the subtractive shapes, and you also have a, here we go, mode, right? So we talked about subtractive, FM, and ring mod. Let's try out FM just for a bit. So there's no time for a full FM synth tutorial, but the idea is that you've got two carriers and two modulators, and one changes the frequency of the other. for complex wave shaping. So you basically add harmonics to a sound with modulation rather than subtracting them with a filter. Eagle-eyed viewers, by the way, may have noticed the wavetable option here on the new panel, on the Deluge 3 panel, which you can order for the old Deluges as well. So it seems likely that a wavetable synth option is in the stars, though no date has been given for this. This was the case, by the way, when the original Deluge panel came out, it was shipped with Aftertouch as a mod source, but you couldn't access it. And then it was later on added as a firmware upgrade. So right now, if we get cheeky and try and hit wavetable, it'll just say soon. Hopefully that's coming soon. Anyway, let's go back to subtractive mode, then oscillator type. Again, you can use the shift combo or the menu. So Deluge supports samples as an oscillator type, and you can go ahead and load a sample or record it, right? Go into file and choose any sample on the um, SD card. Let's maybe go for something a little bit more tonal. That's good enough. So once you load up a sample, you can transpose it as you like. Notice how I, when I transpose the sample down, it gets much longer and at a lower fidelity. And if I transpose it up, it'll get really short. That's because that's how samplers work by default, right? As you pitch up a sample, it'll become shorter as you pitch it down it'll play for longer. 
if you sample an acoustic instrument like a piano, it gets pretty odd pretty quickly, especially if you transpose it more than, say, half an octave up or down. Now, what's really cool about Deluge is that it supports the concept of multi-samples. So if I go up the menu here and into my multi-sample folder, this is something that I created. I put in a few uh, multi-samples here. For example, una quarta from Native Instruments. Let's load that up and you load up a multi-sample with a long press. And this loads up an entire folder of samples, every single semitone on the una quarta keyboard. I think it sounds really nice. Especially, I think, when played with uh, an external keyboard. Yeah, and multi-sampling is one of my favorite features in Deluge. Another neat feature in Deluge is time stretch. Let me just load up one of the factory kits that shows this nicely. So Deluge supports one-shot samples, but if you take a loop, and I'll just plonk it into the kit here, right? Then when I hit play, if it's set to have time stretch on, then it will adjust to the tempo of my project. Obviously there's an algorithmic limit to how far you can stretch this. Maybe it sounds a little bit better with reverb. Right, but a really useful function, especially if you don't take it to the extreme. So that's pretty nice, and you could also pitch shift clips, or say, uh, what else? A bunch of other options here. Let's say, reverse it, why not? So, pretty powerful sampling engine in Deluge. Let's go back to an init preset, just to make sure that we um, cover the synth engine parameters. I'll go through these briefly, because we don't want this to be too long. You've got two oscillators, noise generator, vibrato options, low pass filter and high pass filter. Let's just sweep that. Now this knob is a little bit clicky, so you could sweep the filter here, right, with resonance for a smoother motion. Or you could control the parameter here as well. Then you've got uh, a few modes for the filter. By the way, these two can be changed by pressing these buttons. Right, so drive, 20, uh, 12 dB, 24 dB, and this guy. Let's move on. You've got the low pass filter, high pass filter, which are in series mode we talked about before. We'll get to modulation in a bit, but you've got two envelopes, envelope one and two, and two other foes, one and two, which can be assigned to numerous destinations. And then with voice options, you've got a few interesting features here. A voice can be set to be polyphonic or monophonic. There's a unison mode, right, which you can activate both with a number of oscillators as well as with detune. But another nice feature that's hidden in the voice mode is the arpeggiator. With a few modes. Random mode. And then, um, get sync, octaves. Might go wild here. Okay, control. Stuff you'd expect from an arpeggiator. Now, you can have a few of these arpeggiators running in multiple clips, again, a pretty awesome feature I think you don't find in many of these Groovebox style instruments. But there are other parameters for the voice as well, effects, sidechain, we'll get to effects later on, sidechain, level, and pan. So those are the controls you have in the synth engine overall. So let's do move on to modulation, which is getting Deluge to turn knobs for us. Modulation sources are listed on the right side of the panel, and they include two envelopes for one-time modulation of parameters, two LFOs, 
for occurring modulations. And then sidechain, which will duck a parameter for you based on kicks or any other send sources you choose. You've also got keyboard tracking with a note parameter, a random number generator, which will produce a random value every time you hit a note, and aftertouch and velocity modulation sources from external controllers. You might also notice X and Y up here. These are soon parameters as of the making of this video, but the idea here will be to support MPE expression at some point in the future. Connecting a mod source to a destination is really simple. You either select it in the menu system, right, which is my less preferred method of doing things, but let's say that I wanted to modulate the frequency of the low pass filter. I could do that here by clicking into the parameter, choosing what I want to assign to it, envelope or LFO1 or LFO2. Let's go for LFO2, hit that here, and then choose modulation depth. All right, so now LFO2 is controlling the filter frequency. Now, like I said, this is not the way I like to do things. A much quicker way would be to find the low pass filter on the panel, then locate its frequency right here, and just hit shift frequency. So now we have this selected as a parameter, which you could change here as well, right, if you wanted. But the beauty is that now you can assign modulation sources to this parameter just by clicking the modulation source with shift. So let's again go for LFO2, which is right here, shift LFO2, and now we can set a mod depth. Now notice the frequency pad is blinking and you can see that LFO2 is a mod source blinking as well because it's impacting this. Now if we step back, you can see this is kind of like a mod matrix, right? You've got LFO2 modulating the frequency of the low pass filter. I could assign another parameter to modulate that as well. So let's turn this down for a second and say go to aftertouch, right? So shift aftertouch, then set depth. And right, so now I can modulate the cutoff frequency of the filter with aftertouch on the keyboard. And you can of course assign multiple modulation sources to the same destination, right? So I can have both of them going at the same time. Now the beauty of this system or this mod matrix is that if at any point I wanna know what's modulating a parameter, just hit it and then any sources that are impacting it will light up. Okay, so let's move on to audio clips. Now audio clips shouldn't be confused with samples. You can load up a sample into your kit or song anytime, but if you want to create an audio clip, you can only do that either in song view or in the arranger. So let's take a look at song view because that's where we could loop as well. I'll just use this track as a little metronome. Though there is a built-in metronome by the way. And to create an audio clip, I just go back to song view, press any empty pad, and then just like I could create a kit MIDI or CV clip, I would press here and create an audio clip. Now an audio clip can record audio from any number of inputs and you press input and the audio clip to choose that. You've got the hardware inputs, left, right, stereo, balanced input, and then you can choose the mix of deluge, which is the raw audio without the effects and volume, or just the entire output itself. So resample the entire audio. And I'll go for left with monitoring, which is this handy dandy microphone that I have with me here. You could, by the way, just load up a sample from the SD card into an audio clip. Now to record audio into an audio clip, I just need to make sure that it's armed. Hit record and play. One, two, three, four. It'll keep recording until I one press two, this button. Three, four. It'll keep recording until I one, two. So that's one way to record audio or live loop into your project. One, By the way, two. This does three, automatically time four, stretch, right? So if keep I keep recording until I one, make this two, faster. Three, four. It'll keep recording until I one, two. Or slow it down. Three, four. It'll keep recording until I one. This now becomes a sample that I can do anything that I want with. I could trim it, zoom in, zoom out, right? Take a look at it. If I wanted to crop it, I just hit the end and then shorten it or make it longer or extend it beyond the initial recording if I wanted to. Let's just stay with this. 
So that's the simpler way of recording audio clips. And there are a few parameters that you can impact in an audio clip, a little bit less than a regular synth voice, but you can transpose it, um, high pass filter, low pass filter effects, and so on. And of course, like I mentioned, load up samples from the um, SD card if you liked. Now, aside from one-off recordings of audio clips, you can also overdub or create layers with them. So let's choose the left input with monitoring, which is this little dot here. Now keep your kids away because I'm gonna sing. So I could record this, right? I'll just go one, two, three, four. One, two, right? three, four. And I have that. Four. However, one, I can two, add layers three, to this four. by holding one, record two, three, and pressing four. the audition one, pad two, under the three, audio clip. Four. So let's try that one, out. Two, three, four. So that's pretty horrible, right? But I could then go ahead and mute any of these layers or bring them back in. Synthstrom, could you please add auto tune to the next version of Deluge? So now that we have this wonderful monstrosity in song mode, I could go ahead into my arranger. Let's just put a beat here and then maybe start this guy here. And this guy will play this far and this far. And let's just see what happens. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I apologize to all my viewers. So let's delete this project. Aside from audio clips, Deluge supports resampling. So let's just go back into this kit because it was nice and quick. Bring this loop in. Right. So we've got that. Let's say I want to resample a performance. I just hit record and play. It automatically starts recording. I could say apply a filter to this. Maybe delay. And now I actually have this performance. If I go into file, right? I go ahead and navigate the um, folder structure of my SD card and artist clip, blah, blah, blah. resample, right? So this is my resample folder. And if I scroll back to the latest, right? This is what I just performed. Delay should be coming soon, right? So really easy to just resample everything into a WAV file. This lives on your SD card. You could import it to your computer or just play it back in a project if you wanted. Let's do talk a little bit more about effects. I've got a simple kit here to demo this thing. So effects can be applied either at the sound level, at the clip level, or at the song level. So let's just get a simple beat going here, All right? And maybe hi-hats. So I could say apply reverb just to the hi-hats if I wanted, right? Or just to the kick. So that's applying effects on a per sound basis. Let me just get the reverb down. I could also affect the entire clip if I wanted, right? With effect entire, right? That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is just going into the song, holding the clip and affect entire lights up. I could add reverb to everything. And as you may have guessed it, applying effects to the song itself, to the whole song would be with effect entire. If I need more tracks here, of course, but that would just work, say with reverb, right? To all the clips in my song. There are a bunch of effects here. You know, I won't go through all of them. Uh, you know, delays, analog delay, if you like, ping pong, I just the analog delay. You can customize each of these, by the way, there's custom one, two, and three, and you can change actually the original ones as well. And let me just make this a little bit more manageable. There's also stutter, which is pretty nice. So that's effects. Let's talk a little bit about MIDI and CV. So synth, kit, and audio clips are not the only types of clips you've got. You've got MIDI and CV clips, 
MIDI clips are fairly straightforward. You play notes, you can choose the channel. You also have a few options like program change, bank, sub. You've got a MIDI arpeggiator, right? So those are the MIDI clip options. The gold knob and effect slots are MIDI CC controls. So you just select the pair that you wanna change, right? Press the knob and then turn select to the CC that you want to affect. Then this knob will now control that CC and you can automate this as well. Aside from MIDI, you can also control CV. Options here are simpler, either one or two. And you've got an arpeggiator with all the arpeggiator options, which is cool. You can configure the gate outputs. They can either send clock or you can sequence them as gates in the sequencer. One last note about MIDI and CV. You can also sequence MIDI and CV events in kit tracks. So you can program any kit elements as you would regularly, right? But if you wanted a particular track to control MIDI or CV gear, you just hold the pad that you want to control external gear and then press either MIDI or CV, right? If it's a CV pad, then you can choose any one of the four gates to sequence on this row. And let's turn this pad into a MIDI pad or MIDI control row. And likewise, you choose the MIDI channel and the MIDI note that you want to sequence. Let's talk about a few miscellaneous items. There's an open source project by Jamie Fenton called Downrush. This lets you manage and edit Deluge projects wirelessly from a computer if you buy a wireless Toshiba SD card like this one here. I'll link to that in the description if you want. There's also a helper app by Dominic Hawken, AKA Mr. Wiggly, that you can use as a cheat sheet on your phone for various deluge features. I'll link to that when it's available. It's not available as of the making of this video. Finally, if you want ideas on what to do with all the sound design and modulation options in deluge, check out my ever expanding book available to people who support this channel on Patreon. Feel free to ask me any questions below, hit like if this was useful, and ring the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.